Welcome back everyone, I'm Craven and this is Cold Steel 2. We are on the Courageous and I'm happy to report we have gotten the last few fish. So we're all up to date, so we got the entire list filled until the bottom. So we still have a, quite a bit of fish to go, but at least now we found all the missing one. And yes, two of them were at Trin uh, Dragon Bridge. Uh, which I have to inform to that all the people there have new text as well So we do have to do that at some point and the other one I have to go into a lot of places Apparently it was in Lake Lacrima that I missed one So I got this one as well, and it was the trout So um, yeah Pretty happy about that. So now we can continue on with maybe A and S rank fish that would be very interesting because we have the better rod so we should be able to do that and in the process we collected more than enough point to get the missing accessory from Annabelle so we shall do that soon too but for now I also remember that we found something here we had a side quest and I totally forgot about it and that is of course our blue blank uh, optional side quest which we did uh, summarize where we had to be for that, which was of course uh, the medical bay. And it's always really hard to figure out where it is because there is no indicator on the floors. <laughs> because it did say a blue cross, which this is the only one when we walked past it, we did see the indicator right there. So let's start the episode with that. Because we all like the good uh, blue blank uh, side quest, don't we? Hmm? A letter? Oh right, it's probably from Phantom Thief B. This must have been what he meant by where the blue cross indicates. Reen took the letter, confirming that the sender was exactly who he thought. Yep, <laughs> this is him alright. What should I do? Though, honestly, I'm half tempted to just cram it in uh, my pocket and keep uh, going about my day. Well, usually... I don't think that's a good idea, because he will keep messing with you until you do his quest. <laughs> no, I, I think I should read it. What if it's about a crime he's already committed? I'd hate to just uh, be sitting on this until later, only to find out when I read it that it's too late to undo any harm he's done. Green opened the letter seal and out popped a card. To my dear friends in class 7. I've taken the liberty of preparing an enjoyable diversion to spice up your mundane day-to-day -day lives a little. Well, look at that. I'm already regretting opening this thing. <laughs> mm, I continue to watch the radiance from afar, even dazzled by its brilliance. That radiance is no doubt the fruit of the bonds you share with one another. Bonds which today I wish to test. I wish to see how you act when the seeds of distrust and discord are sown among you, and I shall be watching from close by. To witness so rare prizes of an occasion, I will be stealing from you one of your beloved classmates. I hope you'll enjoy this little experiment. I know I certainly will. Steal one of our classmates? Damn, I tell the others about this. This is not a moment to... Now, let the game begin. Dance for me a beautiful dance. Each step replete with uncertainty. Th that's him. I can't believe he was able to access the ship's uh, intercom system and even the lights. Oh, they're back on now. I need to hurry and check on the others. Ooh, I wonder if for this quest they all have unique text for this. So who are we going to be missing? Anyway, that's why I asked you all to come here, but... Hmm, everyone seems to be present and accounted for. Well, at least to me. Perhaps the whole business about him stealing one of us was a lie then? Well, I don't know. He doesn't seem like the type who would go all this effort, then not follow through. Do you think he's already struck? Stolen a member of Class 7 and assumed their identity? 
No way. Well, if he did, he's a true master of disguise. Everyone looked the same as ever to me. I don't know if this is related to the current situation, but after the lights came back on, I found this card in the orbital factory, factory area downstairs. Alright, that would mean that George is now our first suspect, if he is in this room and one of our classmates in disguise. Hmm. Hey, that's one of B's uh, calling cards. Can I have a look at it? George handed Reed the card and he began to read it aloud. Hmm, the theft has been conducted successfully. I am now among your number. So he is. Ah, so Angelica was right then. Wait, there's more. Having established that, allow me to lay down the rule for our little game. Green Sorcerer, you shall take up the mantle of detective. Your mystery is to discover whom among you I have replaced. To make things a little more interesting, I will allow Sylphid to aid you as your assistant. Me? What a twisted man. This is all just uh, some game to him. Naturally, I have not taken the place of a detective or assistant, and not of your tutor either. I have assumed the identity of another one of Class 7's members. I look forward to your struggles to discover which one. Here's to your success. So, we're all potential suspects then. Well, I sure hope he didn't choose Emma. Hmm, if we exclude Reen, Fee and Instructor Sarah, that leaves 8 people that could be him. <laughs> it's starting to sound kind of fun. As long as you're not suspecting me, then it wouldn't be so much fun. Before we begin, however, I would like to set forth two rules. In the interest of fair and enjoyable game, of course. Rule 1. Questions must concern events that happened after you went your separate ways from the bridge. Inquiring what things that happened before then or about personal information, I could not possibly know, so it's strictly forbidden. Rule 2. You may not console with anyone outside of Class 7. That includes the Purple Lightning. Should you violate either of these rules, I can offer no guarantees of the safety of your missing member. I would assume that by now you know me well enough to realize this is no idle jest. Well, that's everything? He sure can fit a lot of uh, words on these cards. Hmm. Though I don't see anything that might break the second rule. Yeah, for their sake, I think it'll be best for us to keep our mouths shut and let them figure this out now. Indeed. We can't uh, risk putting whoever is taken uh, hostage in danger. Well, I guess I'm off the limit uh, camp too. Well, I can't say I'm thrilled to think that the creep is sitting right here among us. Indeed, especially when we can't even help Class 7 identify him. Just leave this to us. Uh, we'll go get him. Well, okay. For now, I think we sh it will be best for us uh, all to leave the room then. We'll be sure to tell everyone on board to stay away from this room too. Good luck everyone. Yeah, so every character of class 7 has their own unique traits like abilities, tendencies and stuff like that. And we need to use that to pick who is not himself right now. Like Elliot's music, Laura's sword, uh, Emma's magic, the childlike nature of Milliam. Uh, of course, the rivalry between Machias and Yusus, the supportiveness of Gaius. So yeah, I think we need to focus on those, and if we see anything out of the ordinary, that will probably be uh, blue blank. All right, we're finally ready to get this started. Now we just need to decide how we're going to work this out. Well, the first rule is going to be a pain. The one that we can only ask questions about things that happened after we all split up after being on the bridge. Yeah, I mean, if it wasn't for that, this would be a fairly simple matter. True, I thought you would uh, know what we had for dinner yesterday, for example, but all of us would. Which means that rule exists so we have plenty of time to savor the enjoyment before we work out the answer. Ugh, give me a break. Hmm, so which of us is pretending to be then? <laughs> I don't really like having... Uh, to doubt each other like this? Hmm, I did say his intention was to test our bonds. I suppose this is one way to do that. Hmm, 
if you work something out yet, Reen? I wish so far. I've got nothing. How about you? Same here. Maybe we should uh, give everyone a pet down. Say what? I guess that's not technically in violation of any of the rules. Hmm, then I see no harm in doing so. But... Oh, don't worry. I'll handle the girls, Reen can do the boys. Well, I suppose that's fine then? Hmm, you seem strangely reluctant. I thought so. You're him, aren't you? What do you mean you thought so? If you ask me, you're more likely uh, to be the rat. Although frankly, I find it hard to believe that any imitation could capture the sheer arrogance that seeps from uh, your every pore. Hmm, I'll take it back. I find it equally ludicrous to think any imposter could de duplicate the ability to overreact to even the slightest provocation. <laughs> well, look like these two are the same as ever. Well, I think we're letting ourselves get a bit sidetracked though. Yeah, let's get uh, on with uh, those pet downs. The eight of them split into two groups, with Reen and V conducting the pet downs. Uh, well, that didn't get us anywhere. What should we do next? Maybe ask everyone what they did after we split up earlier? Yeah, that's probably the best place to start. That way we can uh, piece together the day's event and see if any testimonies stand out as odd. So, let's see. Yes, I guess we have to go by everyone. So, Elliot, can you tell us what you've been up to? Hmm, well, I went down to the factory area with Machias because we want to make a few tweaks on our weapons. After that, Machias uh, still uh, was taking care of some stuff, but I hopped on the elevator and left. I headed to the art uh, training room to see how the modifications went, and that's basically it. This is true, that is where we saw Elliot uh, when we did our talks uh, in the last episode. Right, so you went to the factory, got some weapon adjustments, and then went to test out your staff. And Machias was with you initially, so he'll at least be able to verify that first part happened. Gotcha. Thanks, Elliot. Alright, let's uh, ask someone else then. How about it, uh, Machias? Can you tell us what you've been doing? Of course. First, I stopped by the factory area in the hold with Elliot to have some adjustments made to our weapons. Elliot finished off first and left while I stuck around waiting for my shotgun. About a half hour later, I finally left the hold as well and dropped by the game room, where I ran into none other than uses. We even ended up playing a fairly civil game of billiards too. We were still playing when all this uh, trouble happened. So you start a friendly game of billiards just like that? Aww, we're just such good friends. We are not. <laughs> anyway, thanks for giving us your account, Machias. Um, this is a very clear suspicion of mine because it was not a civil game of uh, billiards. Because Yusus was trying to give him tips and Machias wouldn't have any of it. He would rather lose than take any hints, even though the hint he was giving was actually pretty decent at that. So yeah, first, uh, first suspicious uh, encounter has been noted right here, right now. All right, let's ask someone else then. Can you tell us about what you've been up to, uh, Yusus? Hmm, certainly. First, I went to close combat training room where I sparred for a while with Gaius. After practicing for a while, we parted ways after which I went to the game room. It was there roughly 30 minutes before Ragnus wandered in to break my peaceful reverie. He was being his usual nosy self, so I figured I'd shut him up by pesting him at a game of billiards. Oh, you just have to go and make yourself sound superior, don't you? Whoa, whoa, take it easy there, guys. Eh, seems to add up with Machias' testimony. Yeah, thanks, Jesus. Alright, let's ask someone else then. Okay, nothing too strange there. At least nothing that I can disprove outright. Can you tell us what you were up to, guys? Hmm, first, I swung by the close combat training room where Jesus and I went for a couple of rounds. Eventually, we both left the room and headed to the elevator together. I was the first to get off at the third floor. From the elevator, I headed straight out onto the front deck, to enjoy the feeling of the breeze in my hair. Well, I see you train with Eustace, so then went to the front deck. Thanks for your testimony, guys. Alright, let's uh, ask someone else then. 
and this is not too strange because the wind is basically his life so i wouldn't be too surprised he doing that what were you up to during that time uh, Alyssa? well i was hanging around with millie for a while we were sitting and talking at one of those tables uh, in the third floor hall after a while she remembered she had to do something and left i stayed there pretty soon after that princess elephant passed by and invited me into the royal room that's it i think so you were with the princess thanks Alyssa. that was a big help all right let's ask someone else then which is all the true to her accounts can you tell us what you were doing uh, laura hmm, i can though i'm afraid there's really not much to tell after everyone dispersed i choose to remain behind on the bridge observing the crew at work oh really there's not really any point in inquiring any further then thanks laura all right let us someone else then can you tell us how you spent that time emma hmm, well actually i was with fee the entire time you were yep she was Slee was there too they were both nearby when the lights went off too so I'd have a hard time believing it's Emma. Right, and Fee got no reason to lie, but we are dealing with B here, so we can't be 100% certain he isn't Emma. What were you doing together then? Well, first we went to the reference room so I could investigate something. After that, we went to the kitchen. Does that all check out, Fee? Yep, all of it. Okay then, thanks Emma. Alright, let's ask someone else then. And the last one. So, Milliam, can you tell us what you were up to during the time in question? Sure. <laughs> well, first I was hanging out with Alyssa at one of the tables in the third floor hallway. We were just sitting around talking, though. But, but then I remember my bear. Your bear? Well, I got it from Gramps, and I finally got him back from his train while we were in Roar. Anyway, <laughs> I forgot I hadn't put him somewhere nice yet, so I went straight to the nap room to plop him down there. Oh yeah, that's where I ran into you earlier, isn't it? Thanks, Milliam. Well, that's everyone. Well, if you consider what we've heard right now, there are only two people with even the slightest bit of suspicion to them. One is Machias, one is Gaius, because going out there to have the wind blow through his air does sound typical for him, but maybe they're a bit too on point. But Machias? There was a clear difference to what we encountered in the last episode, so yeah. In our discussion with Yuzu uh, and Makia, so... My uh, bet goes to Makia at this point. Well, that's everyone. Still, just asking everyone individually may not be enough to prove anything. Someone could be lying. You got a point. It might be good to get info about what people were doing from someone other than themselves. Maybe we could ask everyone if they saw anyone else. Oh, don't you mention it. That's a good idea. Thanks for the tip, Fee. <laughs> it's what assistants do. <laughs> True enough. In that case. Alright, let's see if this confirms uh, what we already think. You said you went down to the factory area with Machias, right? And then you went to the arch training room? Did you happen to spot anyone beside Machias during all of that? Oh, actually I did. On the way to the arch room, I passed Eustace and Guys together and said hi to them. Oh, right. Hmm, I might as well take this opportunity to answer for myself. I saw no one other than Elliot, and those I've already specified I met. Alright. As for me, I saw Alyssa sitting alone at one of the tables on the third floor when I went down there. Which does uh, coincide with her story about being there with Milliam and Milliam just rushing away to look for her bear. And assuming everything we heard earlier is true, it must have been there after Milliam left and before Princess Elfin arrived. Alright, that gets a few people out of the way then. Okay, let's ask the next person. You met with Elliot and Yusis, right, Machias? Did you happen to spot anyone else uh, while you were going about your business? 
Well, I did actually. I noticed Emma V as I entered the game room. It must have been when they were headed uh, to the kitchen area. So you saw Emma V entering the kitchen. Got it. <laughs> I didn't realize anyone has uh, seen us going there. Same. Must have let my guard down. Again. Very suspicious, because V doesn't do that. And it could be because I already suspect Machias from being for being B. There's no need to feel bad about that. You were just walking around the courageous, not infiltrating a secret base. You said you, you said you sat and talked with Millian for a while before she left. Then later you were invited into the royal room, right? That's right, yeah. Other than them, I did see Gaius uh, pass through after Millian left. That must have been when he was on his way to the front uh, tech to enjoy the wind or whatever. That's all, though I didn't see anyone else. Alright, thanks. You said you stayed on the bridge after everyone else left, right Laura? Mm, indeed, and of course it follows that I saw none other classmates after that. Nor did I see me. Fair enough. Yeah, not much than that that we can do about that. Emma, you went to the reference room, then to the kitchen, right? And V was with you the whole time, right? You didn't see anyone else while you were wandering around, did you? Well, you can answer this one, right? Of course we did, yes. While we were on the way to the kitchen area, we saw Yusus entering the game room. I didn't see anyone else though. Did you see Yusus, V? Yep, that's a relief. Just knowing that isn't uh, conclusive proof that Blue Blank isn't masquerading as Emma, but oh well. So after you finished talking with Alyssa, you went to the nap room, right Milliam? Did you see anyone other than Alyssa during all of this? Nope, not a soul. I wish I'd just stayed there though, then I might have gotten invited to see Princess Elvin too. <laughs> well, never mind that for now. Well, I think that's all we're gonna get. Okay, we've asked everyone here what else uh, they did and if they saw anyone else while they were doing it. Wanna go over it all again? Yeah, let's do that. First, the places where everyone started out were... If I remember correctly, Elite and Machias were at the Orbal factory on the first floor. Yuzus and Gaius were in the close combat training room on the fourth floor. Alyssa and Milliam were at one of the tables in the third floor hallway. Finally, Emma and I were in the reference room on the second floor. Aside from Laura, who has no alibi, all of them were in groups of two. True, which means everything just listed is likely to be genuine. As for what I did afterwards though, we'll go over that now. Elliot left the Orbal factory before Machias did, and then went to the art training room alone. On the way there, he also met Caius and Yusius. Yep, after that, Caius uh, says he went to deck on the third floor, and Yusius went to the game room on the second floor. That's right, and on my way there, I saw Lissa alone in the third floor hallway. Oh, that means I must have already left uh, for the nap room by then. Yeah. Next up, Machias. About 30 minutes after Elliot left the factory room, he finished his business there and as well was headed to the game room. Hmm, that does seem to mesh with my own experience, seeing as I was in the room alone for the time before he arrived. Yeah, then uh, as I was walking into the game room, I noticed Emma and V walking into the kitchen. As for Emma and V themselves? Well, we started out in the reference room, as I mentioned earlier, but eventually we moved to the kitchen. I can't remember exactly how long we spent in the reference room though. But as we left and we were on our way to the kitchen, we saw Yusus heading to the game room. Hmm. Any idea who's uh, our guilty party ring? Yeah, I've got a good idea now. You do? Oh, you're so cool sometimes, Reen. Could you share your idea with us then? Gladly. The one who's actually Phantom Thief B in disguise is none other than that. I stand by my point all from the first uh, interaction. And thinking about all the other information, the fact that they can't specify how long they've been in the reference room and they saw uses when they get out towards the kitchen. Um, and Yusus saying he spent the t some time in the game room itself before Machias came there. 
would mean that he could not have seen uh, Emma and V being there because then he would have run into Yusuf or Yusuf wouldn't have been for a while in the game room. But like I said, this is all thoughts coming from my original suspicion of it being Makia so far. So I'm gonna choose him and if anyone else has more proof on how to interpret it that he is the suspect or if I made the wrong decision, how the others uh, get involved, please feel free to write in the comments because if I'm wrong, I do want to figure out how to interpret it, but I don't think I'm wrong. I am 90% sure it's Machias. You, Machias. Why me? What's your evidence? Well, Machias said that he saw you and Emma enter the kitchen area, right? But if he did, where does that leave Emma's testimony? Hmm, you mean the fact that she saw users enter the game room? That's right, those two testimonies are at odds with each other. After all, Yusuf said that Makias came to the game room roughly 30 minutes after he himself arrived, right? That is correct. Which means... Exactly, there's no way Makias could have seen Emma V when he claims he did. Exactly. It's just not possible. Well, you say that. But what if it's Emma who's in the wrong? It is true our testimonies contradict each other, yes, but why assume mine is suspect? Because Emma wasn't the only one who saw Yusis, I did too. Which makes say you are number one suspect. Undubitably, my dear V. <laughs> Little uh, Sherlock Holmes in there. The doppelganger right in the midst is none other than Machias. I'm sure of it. The game is of Phantom Thief B. Show yourself. <laughs> Yeah, and then at this point, it's not well, him. <laughs> reasoned, my friends. A fine deduction, if I say so myself. You are correct. I am Phantom Thief B. <laughs> it's so weird hearing that voice in that body. Like, could you imagine if it wasn't Machias that's been Phantom Thief B and he still laughs that maniacally? That would have been perfect. <laughs> Hmm, I can scarcely uh, believe my eyes. He got us good. <laughs> I'm impressed you were able to discern the truth from picking up on such small inconsistency. Or perhaps I extended too generous a hand in helping you along after all. Helping us along? So your suspicious testimony was a deliberate then? Spare us you uh, cape fluttering theatrics and just tell us where Machias is. This game is over. Hmm, such a lively rejoinder. All I say is, the narrow storehouse. But adieu, ladies and gentlemen. I look forward to meeting you again on a new stage one day. I hope so too. <laughs> Hopefully, the battlefield. <laughs> ah, how does he do that? Never mind that now. We need to rescue Machias. At least he didn't make the clue hard and uh, stuff. Yeah, I can't think of any other than the storage room on the third floor that would fit that description. Let's go dig him out, I guess. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Ouch. Hmm, I only wish I could have been there when he, you were captured, just to see the look on your face. <laughs> you look a bit uh, tied up, Machias. Oh, are you just fucking stop going on a TV? Yeah, Yusis is gonna hold this above Machias' head for a very long time. With Machias saved, everyone else set about trying to find Phantom Thief B. Unsurprisingly, he was nary to be found. Still, they had at least managed to avoid any harm from his antics. So far, the most part. All was well that ended well. Ooh, Phantom Thieves Cape is a farewell gift from Blue Blank. Nice, thank you very much. And we have a little time left, so maybe we can hunt down some more students. Uh, Hugo in Aurora and Stefan in the Institute. Alright, I'm guessing we're going to Aurora. And in Aurora, I have seen the text still be the same. Where do so you want to go? We can go directly. 
to Leave them it to both. Me. And let's see if they will uh, join us on an easy way or not. Because we do want all students back on the Courageous at some point. Oh, hello. Hey, you go. Here on business? You bet. I'm here to finalize negotiations on a deal with the Rhineforce company. Oh, and uh, what I've got the chance. On behalf of Kleist Co, let me thank you for your considerable efforts the other day. Sometimes, it's strange belief that you're such a, just a student like us and not a seasoned businessman. Well, either way, this presents a good chance. There is something we wanted to talk to you about. They told you about their plans for the Courageous and their search for other students to fight alongside them. Hmm, I see. I expect you to turn up and ask me eventually. I'm certainly not opposed to fighting alongside you. After all, it seems like you've even got Becky lending you a hand. Then you'll come with us? Well, yes and no. I can not just hop on board right this instant. I still have my fingers in a few pies around here. In fact, I'm in the middle of setting up a commerce network with some other like-minded individuals. A commerce network? You heard me. This network will unite commercial firms and businesses all across Erebonia with Kleisenko at the center. And if everything goes according to plan, I just might be able to do something about the stagnated flow of goods into Erebonia. Or that's my plan at least. It'll be a, quite a coup for Kleistenko's uh, head of sales, so it's an idea to that big to life. Hmm, I'd say it just makes sense for a man in my position, wouldn't you? Well, that sounds like an awfully major undertaking though. Hmm, it just sounds like a w worthwhile endeavor, at the very least. Are you here on business related uh, to that then? Mm, that's right. Once I'm done here, at least for the moment. There's still a few places I need to stop by though, which is why I'm afraid I can't come with you just yet. Not until I've got all those boxes checked. Oh, okay. Well, if you're busy, then you're busy, I guess. I wonder if there's anything we can do to help him. Yeah, use the courageous to fly them to all those locations? How about this? We've got our own airship. How about we just go to all the places you haven't gotten to yet? You? Well, we've been fighting all over eastern half of the Empire. In all likelihood, we'll be paying those places a visit anyway. If you ask me, it seems sensible to let us take care of it. Hmm. <laughs> I think you're onto something there. Alright, I think I will let you guys handle this. Great. So, where have you been able to get to yet? The Graham and Emir are my last two. I've had a chance to uh, touch base with my contacts in all of the other major locations already. All you need to do is find the person representing each town's merchants and vendors and get them to sign one of these. Commerce Network Contract. Ah, seems perfectly doable. I'll make sure these get where they need to go. Emir should be a snap at least. I know the head of the merchant association there. Well, good luck then. We'll meet here when we finally uh, finish everything up. I'll be commuting to and from Heimdall, getting this squirt away before I come aboard. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Shall we be off then? Alright, well, we can, but seeing as our other person is gonna be here as well, I might uh, start that one up too. Because I'm pretty sure we have to do something for Stefan as well. There he is. Well. Oh, are you guys students from class 7? Uh, how's it going? Your name's Reto, isn't it? You're the researcher we met during our field study here. Oh yeah, <laughs> didn't we help you out on something while we're here? Yeah, and this is the person that uh, last time said that we have something to help him with, but we couldn't do it because we were on other business at that time. And we, I did say that we needed to come back here. <laughs> wow, good memory. It's good to see you guys again. I can't thank you enough for liberating Roar, either. The number of reasons for me to be in your debt keeps going up and up. Well, I don't know about that. Still, is there anything we can do for you? You seem bothered about something. Ah, you can tell. Well, 
You see, someone I know is missing. He actually goes to your school, but uh, he's a second year, so I don't know if you'd know him. His name is Stefan. Stefan? Did he ever mention being in the lower class chess club? He made it to Roar? Hmm, it seems to recall Reckness being friends with someone by that name. He did, as a matter of fact. He made it here with a few other Thor students. One of his relatives is enrolled here, so he ended up studying in our department on their recommendation. But where could he have gone? Hmm, you don't know where he went, do you? I'm guessing he went to test this little gadget he's been working on here. I told him to be careful if he planned to go out, so I thought we have too much to worry about, but you know, hmm, I'm still a little concerned though. Maybe we should go look for him. Definitely. Do you mind if we go out looking for him just in case? There's no way we turn our backs on anyone in danger, and on top of that, he's a fellow Thor student. Y you sure? I mean, if you are, by all means. I'm guessing Stefan's somewhere along the North Shah Highway. You've been there before, right? It's to the south. Take care. Uh, though monsters are here more dangerous than ever lately. Thanks for the warning. We'll be sure to bring him back. Alright, let's head over to the highway. I'm guessing Stefan's somewhere along the North Shah Highway. You've been there before, right? It's to the south. The monsters have gotten a lot more ferocious lately, so be careful. Yes, they are. They are a pretty nice grinding spot at the moment. So I know exactly where it is. Alright, let's use the elevator. I don't think we've used it yet in a very long time. Alright. Well, I imagine that he wouldn't be in the first screen, because it would be a bit too easy. Because that way he could have done it himself. Ooh, careful. Damn, that one uh, really wants to follow us. If you Advantage do, is ours. you might as Let's well take it down. Up. My turn. Here. Yeah, and I do need uh, a bunch of seconds anyway, so some extra fights doesn't hurt anyone. And the main reason is, is because as in Laura's uh, setup, I want her to be the, one of the first to open up one You're of our level 2 slots. Because I have a course Very well. that would be perfect for her in bigger fights. Right. And we're gonna have some really big fights ah. coming up. I'll handle it. Because it's a course of Grace Search Strength. And make sure that her Let's first attack doubles in damage without any other negative effects. Then taking up a spot. Uh, in the uh, in her unit, so yeah, I'm definitely gonna be doing that later. But like I said, for that I need to have enough sepet to open up her secondaries. And that's also one of the reasons why I'm grinding a little bit. Also, for uh, just the the money, so we can equip more stuff. All right, let's see. There it is. I know exactly where it is. It's right next to. Uh, Hydra monster. Which we can definitely handle with this team, but I'm hoping he'll be fine. What the? That looks like. Oh, don't come any closer. Cut us, please help me. Stefan! Machias? Reen? Leave these monsters to us. We'll take care of them. Enemy sighted. Let's take them out. Oh yeah, we'll My definitely turn. take care of them without any problems. Second four. Damn. Alright, one of them is already incapacitated. I'll handle it. Will you take care of the other one? Here. <laughs> Same one. Right. We still should be able to work around that. This one's just for you. Enjoy. They're off balance. There. I'll oh, handle this. Just not enough. <laughs> uh, treasured sword. Know your place. Ta 
Here I go. All right, one left. Ooh, we still got a bit to go. Well, this does play me. Fall. Now's our chance. Now, B. Roger. Six. Should it be enough? Okay. I think so. Well, he is uh, incapacitated anyway. Hostiles neutralized. Guess we're safe. Phew, there we go. You aren't hurt, are you, Stefan? No, I'm fine. Thank you for coming to my aid. I don't even have a scratch on me. Thank you so much, Machias, and the rest of you guys too. And now that I'm not about to become some monster's next meal, let me say that I'm just as glad to see you all. <laughs> it's good to see you too. I was praying you made it out of Tristel, all right? Same here. <laughs> Another happy reunion. Oh, it's rather touching to see them, isn't it? Hooray! That's checkmate for the chess club. <laughs> Go on. Enjoy your passionate embrace with one another. We aren't watching. Oh, you just... Shut up. What are you doing uh, all the way out here, anyway? This does seem like the safest place for a student to be alone. Well, I came here to conduct a test uh, on a program I developed at the institute. I, I think it will prove useful to you, so if I could, I'd like to get it finished before hopping aboard. Unfortunately, I ran into a nasty bug during testing and now it won't work properly. It was when I was trying to fix that these uh, monsters suddenly surrounded me. Hmm, I see. Well, in that case... I started programming quite a bit back at the academy, so I'm inclined to think I might be able to help you uh, with it. What are you saying? Really, Machias? Oh, that would be swell. Machias and Stefan uh, teamed up to debug the program. Meanwhile, the rest of Class 7 stood guard, ensuring that they could focus on their work. It's done! <laughs> now it works perfectly! Thank you, thank you, Machias, and everyone here too. Thanks again! Well, I'm just glad uh, it wasn't out of my debt. Incidentally, what kind of program is it? Well, it's a database system to gather info from combat situations. Not to blow my own uh, trumpet, but it's really useful. You can pull up anything stored in this little guy instantly. Wow. Recording combat statistics, huh? Well, that does sound rather convenient. Yep, and knowing is half the battle. Well, I tried inputting the data from the fight you just had as a test, and it looked like it all works great. <laughs> Sorry, but uh, I had to put you out uh, to finish things, but thank you. I ended up being a huge success. I'll have to go let Reda know about this right away. Alright, everyone ready to head back to the Institute? Yes, we are. So, will he come back to us with that program? Ah, thanks a ton for finding him. I'm guessing you're gonna go with uh, them, Stefan? Oh, that's right. Still, thank you so much for all you've done for me. Now, I'm going to do my best to support my fellow Academy students. <laughs> awesome. And good luck. I'll keep uh, rooting for you. By the way, I put the database program you made onto a memory cord. All you need to do is install it onto one of Courageous's computers, and you'll be good to go. Thank you. This will sure come in handy. It'll be great to have you with us again, uh, Stefan. Let's work to take back our academy together. You bet. <laughs> They're so worked up, you'd think they were in some uh, sports club instead. Well, chess is technically some sort of sport, so yeah. After biting a fond farewell, Reto returned to his lab and Class 7 guided Stefan to the Courageous. Stefan was welcomed aboard the Courageous. Yes, he was. Alright, let's uh, go to the Courageous, let's see if we can quickly go to Emir and Legram to finish off. Where do you want to go? Leave it to me! Hugo's quest as well. Then only thing we have left is of course Klein and Hyvel. But we're gonna do that at a later time. I think in the next episode we'll probably do our rounds. Uh, past a few cities like Twin Dragon Bridge and maybe Lake Lacrima and maybe even check out if uh, Keldic also have new texts. Ah, oh, Loreen, can I get you something? Well, actually, there is something I'd like for to talk to you about. Reen told him about the Clients & Co. Commerce Network. 
Ah, forming a network with a big company from Heimdall, huh? Well, that sounds like a pretty good idea, actually. We're having a hard time getting stuff in lately, but it's clear we aren't the only ones. Working together on a common problem sounds like a great way to move forward. So that means... I think I can have a look at that uh, contract. Leo read and apparently pleased signed the contract. Ah, thanks for bringing this to me. Oh, and while you're here, come by and play with Alf again if you've got some time. He really misses you. <laughs> we appreciate your cooperation and I'll definitely swing by when all this is over. They just leave the shop in Lagram. There it does. Alright, let's move on back. Yeah, this is not uh, too bad. We can easily Where knock it out of the go? park. Now, who would it be in Lagram? Full speed ahead! Gotta be one of the people at the shops, uh, wouldn't it? Yeah. It has to be. Mm, text here also different, because people are standing in a different way. Ah, oh, Lady Laura's classmates. How nice to see you. Can I help you with something? Well, actually, yes. Reen told him about Kleisenko's Commerce Network. Ah, oh, well now, that is very interesting. It certainly makes sense for us merchants to come together in times like these. Does that mean you're willing to join the network? Mm, gladly. May I see that contract? Watto reads over the contract and happily signed it. <laughs> Thank you very much. We really appreciate your cooperation. Oh, think nothing of it. If Lady Laura's trusted friends think the idea is sound, then I'm inclined to agree. Well, I wish you the best of luck in whatever you're off to do next. Cool, thanks. That takes care of both contracts. We better get these back to Hugo and Roar. Yes, we definitely should. Let's go. And hopefully he'll have uh, rounded up all his Heimdall stuff. Where do you want to go? Full speed ahead! Oh, you're back. I take it you were able to get some fresh ink on those contracts then? Sure did. Here you go. Reem returned the Commerce Network contract to Yugo. Ah, these are perfect. Thanks for taking care of that for me. Now we've got all the main commercial firms in Eastern Arabonia in our network. But with things uh, as they are now, the West will have to wait. In good time though, we should be able to bring them on board too. Hmm, that was quite a turnaround. Well, at least we're done now. Kleist Co. is a very sizable firm, even by the capital standard, so I can see this being a landmark arrangement. Well, now that we got that taken care of, what do you say? Will you come with us aboard the Courageous? Hmm, I will. I've already made everyone at the company aware of my uh, travel itinerary, so I can leave whenever you're ready. One thing though, could you give me a hand with something, Reen? I'd like to open a shop aboard, you see. There's just one other thing I need to do while we're at it. Hmm? Sure, that's fine. What does he want to bring with him? Reen returned to the Courageous with Hugo, and after parting ways with everyone else, the two of them set to getting his shop prepped and ready. Ooh, very fancy. There we go, that should do it. I made sure to bring only the best of the best from our company. It is pretty fine selection, no? All that's left now is to use it all to aid you. Thanks, we really appreciate it. Here you go. Ah, oh, hey Becky. Don't you hey Becky me with that cool attitude of yours, wee man. First you decide to roll into in out of nowhere and then you get the bright idea to set up shop right bleeding next to me. <laughs> What's the issue? This is just about the only spot worth setting up a uh, shop in. I figured even you would realize that. Ah, we bam, does not even realize how worried I was. Sitting that aside, what's the deal with we network you cobbling together all under the rock like? No one uh, at the Grand Market got told, trying to cut us out of the picture, huh? Hmm? 
Didn't you tell us that the Graham and Emir were the only places left? Sorry, I kept you in the dark on purpose. Not for any pernicious uh, reasons, I assume, I assure you, mostly so I could do this. Hugo handed the Commerce Network contract to Becky. What's this now? I figured it would be the easiest to hand it to you in person, since I knew you were already aboard the Courageous. And now that I'm here, we cut the network, class and co, and Celtic representatives working closely together. We should be able to handle things far more efficiently this way. <laughs> ah, I see you had this all planned out. Ah, typical Yugo. It is typical Yugo, but you got a hand to him? Very smooth. After listening to both of them pick her back and forth for a while, Reen made his way back into town. Hugo was welcome aboard the Courageous. Yes, alright, I think that's good for now. So, next episode we're gonna do some walk around a couple of towns, because we've seen that most of them have new tech so far. So, for one episode long, we're gonna go to as many places as we can go, and the one after that we're gonna do the hijacking. And after the hijacking, we'll finish up the last couple of towns so we have everything done and nicely divided into a few nice episodes. So, until then, I wish you all a great night, morning, day, wherever you are. And if you're still here, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and be back next time as we go on our rounds all across uh, Erebonia. See you hmm. then. Bye-bye.